Okay, today we are playing a game on Ilios, we are in the gold SR range, and we will be playing Zenyatta the entire way through. And our current team composition is Winston, Roadhog, Soldier 76, McCree, Zenyatta, and Moira. So it is very average, and there is not too much to say about it. Now, there is an email to talk about, however. The question is... Despite Anna being the objectively worst support in the game, my logic is, since team comp doesn't matter at my SR beyond having a main tank, a main healer, and maybe even long-range hitscan, would it be fine to play Anna to Klein anyway? Now, the short answer is yes, but here's the longer answer, right? So, if we're talking about a MOBA, a fighting game, a seed, uh, card game, you know, the difference between low-tier and high-tier fighter, deck, card, whatever... The difference is huge, it's galaxies apart usually. The difference between top tier and bottom tier in Overwatch is not that big, really, and Anna wouldn't even be in the lowest tier of heroes anyway, right? So, here's the thing. I am of the mindset that a tier list does exist for Overwatch, by the way. Some people try and tell you that it doesn't. Like, it definitely, there is definitely a tier list. Any game that is hero based like overwatch or moba there's always gonna be a tier list that's just how it is right overwatch isn't some pinnacle of balance that somehow transcends having a tier list and every hero is viable to the exact same degree no anybody that tries to tell you that is lying to you okay there is a tier list now to me what makes a, tier, a hero high tier and low tier is how good they are in a variety of situations and whether or not there is something about that hero that is unfair, right? So if we went like A to D, and this is just off the top of my head, if we just went A to D, right? Someone who would be an A would be Genji, Zenyatta, Soldier 76, Moira. Because you can point... They're good in, like, almost any situation. There are very few situations in which those heroes are bad, right? And there is something about the hero that is unfair. Like, you can point at Genji and go, Dragon Blade is the strongest ultimate in the game, and Genji himself is still a pretty good hero. And there are a couple of counters for him, but he can still even outplay his counters because they aren't, like, strict hard counters to Genji, right? Like, he can get away from a Winston and stuff like that. So you would say he's very high tier. You can point at Zenyatta and go, he is good in most situations. Discord is fucking unfair because it makes his team do so much more damage, and his ultimate negates some of the strongest ultimates in the game as well. So he is unfair because of that. He just completely nulls out like Dragon Blade, Attack Visor, Graviton, some of the strongest ults in the game. Nope, no fun allowed. And then Zenyatta himself is still good in a lot of situations. He's good on both sides of the map. Discord is generically really good, right? Like, there are not many situations in Zen which Zenyatta is very bad. And yes, there are situations in which Zenyatta is bad. Don't come and tell me that if you pick Zenyatta as a solo healer, he's bad. Yes, of course he is. But he is good in a lot of situations. So that's why he would be a high-tier hero by my standards, right? Whereas someone who is low-tier is like Torbjorn. First off, he's bad at attacking, so he's already bad 50% of the time. So he's starting off at a massive deficit by my standards. And then you point at him and go, all right, Molten Core is very strong, but it's not like Dragon Blade strong, right? And Torbjorn himself is not as good as Genji as an overall hero either. So he is very low tier. There are already not very many situa- Like, there are some situations he's bad in. And then even the situations he's good in, on, like, the defensive side of the map, he is still very easily countered by very commonly picked attack heroes. So, Torbjorn is a very bad hero by my standards. Anna would be, like, C plus, B minus. Right, she would be like the exact middle, because there are not many situations in which she excels, but there are also not many situations in which she is completely terrible either. The times that Anna is really bad is versus a dive comp, but it does have to be like a dive comp. If there's only one or two dive heroes on the other team, Anna is still probably fine, right? Like, she can get away from, like, a Winston. She can get away from, like, a Genji. And yeah, like, she's still, like, it's a bad matchup for her right there, but, like, even just by herself, she has ways to get away from it. So she is not great in many situations, but she's also not terrible in many situations. So she's, like, middle of the road. And 
there isn't like a thing you can point out on Anna and go, that's really fucking unfair. The best you can do is go, the healing debuff on the grenade is unfair. But like, the rest of her is just kind of like generically okay, right? Like she's the exact middle of the road by my standards. So yeah, you're gonna absolutely play Anna to climb. Is basically what I'm building up to is here is like, yeah, you can definitely play Anna to climb. You would probably start to have issues at like, diamond because at that point it becomes more about like starting to leverage what is very strong about your hero right because mistakes become less uh less obvious and frequent so it becomes more about like min maxing your hero and your play someone like anna just naturally has fewer ways to actively try and win the game right so you would probably start to have issues at like diamond but even then she still isn't like unplayable that is just where you would start to be like mm, i feel like i would be doing more work on a different support so like yeah you're gonna absolutely play anna to climb and i don't think it would really feel much difference until you got to the higher tiers uh, so, that's the longer form of the answer. Like, yes, there is a tier list. The difference between high tier and bottom tier isn't as big as it would be in other games, and Anna isn't even the lowest tier. So, like, yeah, you can definitely play Anna. But I still don't know how people try and purport that there is no tier list for Overwatch. Like, no, yeah, there really is. Like, there is. And the reason I always see... Like, the reason I see people give as to why a tier list doesn't exist is because they're like, well, on the spectrum of, like, counters, right? Like, Winston counters Genji, but Genji can still outplay Winston. Therefore, Winston doesn't counter Genji all of the time. Therefore, Winston is not higher on the tier list. That's, like, not how it works, dude. That's, like, not how tier lists work, right? If you go and look at, like, any... Like, if you go and look at, like, a fucking tier list for, like, League of Legends or Street Fighter or some shit, it isn't like, oh, well, X beats Y, and Y is a high-tier character because they beat all of the people underneath them. So because X beats this y really high-tier character, X must be above Y. Like, that's not how it works. It's like, this is a real... This hero by itself is really fucking strong and good in a lot of situations, so they are high-tier... <laughs> I, I've never understood that, but I've seen, like, a lot of people try to say that, like, because, like, there are no hard counters, there's no tier list. That's not how, that's not really how it works, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, let's start the game. So we're on Ilios right now, we're on Lighthouse, that's the one. Started with Get Fucked. I've just noticed... That your friend's name is Adam Sandler. And I know that's not his actual name. This, your friend's name is Adam Sandler? You need to take that person off your friends list. So anyway, we're on Lighthouse right now. So we're a pretty static team with the exception of Winston. So we're probably going to be keeping the Harmony Orb on Winston a lot of the time. Because Moira should be able to heal the other people, or the other people without too much difficulty. Because they should be all within the same basic area. So we're going to spend a lot of time having the Omni Orb on Winston and putting the Discord Orb on the person that Winston's chasing around, probably. So there, Winston is jumping in at us right now. We want this dealt with post-haste. We put Discord on him. Roadhog's going to finish it off because Roadhog kills Winston, as it would happen. So half their team is dead already. They've uh, lost this fight. That's just how it is. We, uh, really we had, like, a few skirmishes at different points of the map. Like, a couple of people were fighting a couple of people on the enemy team in various locations. And fortunately, all of our skirmishes went in our favor. So we get to win the fight. Hooray! It's like some matches, it's basically just a bunch of 1v1s happening over the entire map. And sometimes your team is just going to be the one that wins all the 1v1s. So it doesn't even matter that no team play happened. So, Winston almost died, he got away with it. When Roadhog, however, he's been bumped off the edge. There's not very much he can do about that one, because the hook tragically does not function as a grappling hook. Imagine if it did, right? Imagine if, like, it functioned like Widow's hook shot, but it was like a skill shot, right? Like, Widow snaps to things. What if you could, like, throw it at the lip of an edge and pull yourself up? Would that be balanced? No, probably not, but it would be sick, right? Like, don't tell me it wouldn't be sick. So Soldier's dead now. So we're missing our tank, and one of our tanks rather, and one of our DPS. So things are going rather poorly right now, and we've been surprised by McCree. 
This is a scary place to stand as Zenyatta in general, just because you can't see the entire courtyard. Like, it's all blocked off right now. It's kind of important to be able to see that, because you need to know if somebody's trying to sneak up on you, because Zenyatta is one of the worst heroes in the game to get snuck upon in general, because... Zenyatta's way of surviving somebody killing, trying to kill him, is to just kill that person faster. So standing in a position where you can't see most of the ways that people can get to you is going to lead to like that kind of thing happening. The, I do think there's an issue with Lighthouse where there isn't a fantastic place for Zenyatta to stand, really, because everywhere is pretty scary to stand. The best you can really do is more like here, right? Because you're near your team, you're still far away from them. And I mean, like, yeah, if you're on the other side of the map, like right there, like, you know. You can probably assume that, but just in case, you know. Some people like to be argumentative for its own sake. Like, yeah, the other side as well, you know. But, like, here's, like, the best you can do, because you're still far away from the enemy team, which is what you're trying to accomplish if you're, like, Zenyatta or Anna. You're still close to your team, probably, because they'll be hanging out, like, around the point somewhere in all likelihood, so they can help you if you need it. And, like, yeah, you're next to the ledge, which is kind of scary, but you can just kind of go in the doorway if you think somebody's going to try and knock you off. Like, you'll see the Lucio coming. You'll see the Farah jump in the air, right? You'll see the Diva coming. So you can just, like, get out of the way of the boop. And you can just see a lot more of the stage, right? Which is important for playing, like, a hero that has no mobility and doesn't like to be snuck up on. Which is basically all heroes with no mobility. None of them like being snuck up on. Zanyan is at a natural disadvantage of being a floating box as far as his hit box is concerned. So he's, uh, he's... You know, if we were going by fighting game standards, Zenyatta would be really, really low tier because his hurt box is literally a giant box around him in the sky floating around. And his hurt box is this tiny little pinprick that he shoots out. Anyway... I don't know what I'm talking about. Is it's it's been it's been like one of those days so far already. We're like like five minutes in. It's been one of those days already. So soldiers using tack visor. What do we do? We use transcendence. It's how it is. Now Roadhog tragically has been purple this entire time. So healing debuff is pretty strong in the right situation, right? Mm hmm. -hmm, -hmm. There is, like, one area in which Anna does really, really excel, and that's against Zenyatta, because her grenade com completely stops Zenyatta's ultimate from being effective, and that's really good. And then you can take that a step further. If your team has Zarya and the enemy team has Zenyatta, Z uh, suddenly Anna becomes a lot better, because the worst thing that can happen to the Zarya team comp is Zenyatta uses Transcendence in the Graviton. If you got Anna... Don't matter. Everybody in there is no longer healing. Yeah, you can't kill Zenyatta. You'll kill everyone else, though, you know? Incidentally, that's why, um... Also, that's why, um... Graviton Pulse Bomb is one of the strongest alt combos in the game, because it kills you through Transcendence. So, anyway. Um... Uh, Nano Blade technically also kills you through Transcendence, because Genji can do enough burst damage quickly off of it to kill you through Transcendence. If you cut and then dash quickly enough, it just kills you. Like, you just die before Transcendence can heal you. So our Roadhog's gone off the edge. We're upset about that. You know, no. Boo. Uh. Uh, standing in this room is, like, kind of scary when there's an Anna, or not an Anna, a Moira on the enemy team because uh, her orb bouncing around you in the room can kill you. <laughs> That's kind of scary. But there's also the health kit, I guess. Now, we've started to stray really far away from our team at this point. Like we're on the enemy side of the map right now. And as a generally poor practice for Zenyatta, being as he is an easy boy to kill. But also, there were not that many people over there. So, it didn't end up mattering. I think we were trying to kill, like, their McCree. Don't, Zenyatta's not really good at dueling very many people, really. Right now, we're, you know, we're playing Zenyatta. We get to sit outside of the point, shooting orbs at the people who are fighting, and hooray. Bullshit ass fucking hook, says, uh, Cypher, Cypher Neo. Mm -hmm. And then we just say good round in, a, in response to that. That's a tilter right there. <laughs> like, that's... Someone's really angry, and then you go, good round. They'll be like, it wasn't a fucking good round, though, was it? And then they're more tilted. 
Easy. Nuclear launch detected. Mm -hmm. Emp. No, an emp is not a nuclear launch. Funky pants. Thank you very much. No, mayonnaise is also not an instrument. Thank you. So now we're on, um, well, that's the one. Well is a scary map for Zenyatta because there are a great many directions in which danger can approach you. And being in a mobile boy with a very focal hazard in the middle of the point is kind of scary as well. But this is like one of the few maps on, um... Ilios, where Zenyatta just has, like, a really good place to stand, right? Like, this is just a good place to stand, Zenyatta. You do have to, like, keep an eye on the left and the right to make sure you're not getting flanked, but, like, Jesus. this is, like, a good place to be, Zenyatta. Now, unfortunately, our whole team have died, so it's it becomes an issue at that point. I was sort of talking about where we're standing more than actually, like, looking at what was happening, so I'm going to go back and see. Ah, yes, Roadhog was bad, I understand. Uh, Winston's almost dead. We're trying to heal him. Then the Harmony Orb falls off, and we don't have it on anybody. Now, Winston shouldn't have gone back in like that, and then the two DPS are over on the other side of the wall as well. Yeah, no, there's not much you can do about that one. Get fucked, Moira. Um, I've actually been playing, like, more Anna on my Smurf, because... Basic reasoning being, I know where to stand, and low SR people also don't know how to dive, so... And, uh, if they don't know how to kill you and you're just positioning right and they don't know how to dive you, like, you actually are effectively immortal because they don't know what to do, right? Now, granted, that is kind of just like saying, well, get good, right? Like, it's not super helpful advice to be like, well, if they don't kill you, they can't counter you. It's not uh, super helpful, though. So, anyway. Like, our whole team died, and there wasn't very much we could do about it, because basically it was their own fucking fault. We dive on Anna? Um, for the most part. Anyway. So, we... We're uh, not very happy about this situation back here. Like, we're trying to come through this very narrow area, and there's a junk rat out there. Winston just put his bubble down, and it, like, it broke within, like, five frames of him placing it. Like, it was quite tragic. Now he's fucking dead. So we've lost our main tank. That makes it bad. We can see Roadhog is not long for this world. Uh, Moira's using Coalescence, but everybody's kind of already dead, so there's not much to be done with it. Like, this is one of those situations where there isn't really much you can do about that one. And, I mean... This is this is the way with uh, playing supports in general. I, I will show you the way, right? Supports... I'm going to need to move it ahead a little bit there because Roadhog was making me uncomfortable. I could feel him breathing on my neck. The thing is with supports is that they generally have less agency over the game in general compared to the other roles. This is why Mercy mains are the saltiest players in the game, even saltier than the... Uh, Genji main is the Mercy main because they feel like they have very little agency over the game, which is a very frustrating feeling. And yeah, supports do have less agency over the game. There are some situations in just which in which you can do nothing as a support. And that's true of all the roles. There are situations where you can do nothing about it, but like there are more of those situations for a support. Like if you're in that alleyway right there, your option is have transcendence and maybe everyone survives. If you don't, well, there's basically nothing you can do other than, like, fucking come around the corner and headshot kill, like, three people immediately, right? Like, it's not realistic. Yeah, there's technically something you can do, but not really. So we're in a very uh, awkward position right now. Like, we don't really want to be fighting over in this area. We decided to use Transcendence. I wouldn't just because it doesn't really look like it's going that well to begin with, and you don't really want to commit ultimates to a fight that doesn't that's already going badly because like most support alts don't like swing a fight around on its head i've already tried to record this like three times and not drunk anything which is a very poor plan on my part so if you're wondering why oh god no don't do that if you're wondering why the the first time I was started the opening speech about tier lists, legitimately, I was talking for 25 minutes. And I was like, 
this is too much. So I was like, we'll start again. And then the second time, I like cleared all the recording out, started again, didn't actually start again. So this is the third time. It's been going well. So it's a good day so far. I legitimately sat and talked about like a fucking hypothetical tier list for like 25 minutes. And I was like, it's too much. It's, we can be more like, I know I'm not a very concise individual, but this is too much even by my standards. So anyway, now we get into this awkward scuffle over here. Like the thing is we've already lost soldier, right? And then like the situation we decide to use transcendence. And, God, I hate being on this fucking map. I can never see people's silhouettes. So it already looks like he might not live, right? Like, and support ultimates are this way where you want to use them as early in the fight as possible, really, because you want as many people to benefit from them as possible, because all the support alt effects are like they make other people stronger. So they don't tend to flip a fight around. Like if you're down like one or two people, Dragon Blade can turn the fight around. Like Transcendence kind of can't. Transcendence is also the sort of vote you hold for specific situations, so sometimes there are situations in which it's okay, but you've got to be thinking like a little bit ahead and be thinking, if I use Transcendence right now, does that mean we're going to die to Graviton in 30 seconds from now, right? Um, so you don't really want to use it in like that kind of awkward situation where like the fight's already going badly anyway. Anyway, as we can see... It's alright, it's going okay now, honestly, like, things are going a lot better than expected. Not r necessarily as a benefit of be no, because we use Transcendence, because I kind of think this might have happened anyway. So, and I, I'm not saying I think the Transcendence was like, like, maybe it kept Winston alive, but like, Winston might have lived anyway, honestly. Because he kind of like got bumped up onto the rooftop and then he jumped away as well, so he might have lived regardless. Doesn't feel like our Transcendence ended up doing that much. And Transcendence is, as we talked about earlier, like, the unfair thing about Zenyatta, or one of them. So he's purple. Um, he shouldn't have been purple. What was he fucking thinking, being purple? Can't be healed when he's purple. And he's playing a very soft tank. Here comes the tire. There's no better sound in the game than hearing Junkrat's tire break, right? Like, you sit in the corner tensed, waiting for it, like, where's it coming from, where's it coming from, and then you just hear it break, and you're like, ah, uh, exhale. <laughs> so, never used to be that way when it was, like, the easiest alt in the world to kill. It's, it's better now. So, as we can see, most of our team is currently dead. This makes it rather difficult for us as Zenyatta. Um, would Transcendence have mattered if we hadn't used it earlier for this fight? Because this is where we go back and we're like, oh, would it, would it have mattered if we still had that ultimate? Because if yes, we can pinpoint the part of the game that we threw him, which is important. It could have done, because we might have been able to keep those two people alive. But it's not very, it's not... We, there's, we'd have to go pretty far to actually reach them, so we might not even keep those people alive if we had Transcendence right now. Um, so as we can see, though, things are going rather poorly. We're using Transcendence right now. Now is not the time to use it, because these two people are still, like, full health right now. And nothing, uh, catastrophic is currently happening. Okay, that's not true. Like, it, it's going very badly. But, um... There's probably going to be a better time to use Transcendence. It wasn't quite to the point where we need to go on to the point while invulnerable to try and stall it for the six seconds, right? Like we could have waited, like, a little bit longer to use Transcendence. Realistically, though, you lose that fight regardless. It's just one of those things where it's like, you know, yeah, the, it would have been better to do X, Y, Z, but... Realistically, you probably still lose anyway. It's just doing X, Y, Z would have given you like a 1% chance of success instead of a less than 1% chance of success. Yeah. Sometimes that 1% matters though. Sometimes. Sometimes because you changed off of the only healer to Doomfist so you could get back to the point faster, sometimes that matters because it only needed you to get there and touch it for the rest of the five ultimates to come in. Now, does that happen very frequently? No, it probably happens once every thousand games, but sometimes it matters. I don't know what I'm talking about. You ever knew what you were talking about? Wow!
That's fucking rude, straw man I've constructed to mock. You come into my own house and insult me like this? Unbelievable. Now, so we're playing Ruins now. Ruins is like my le one of my least favorite maps in the game because I hate like the really awkward geometry. We don't want to be in the point right now. I can tell you that much. We don't want to be on the point. Like, if we're winning, it's fantastic as a hero like Zenyatta or Soldier because we can just sit exactly where we are right now, see the entire universe before our eyes, and it's quite difficult for them to get to us because there's a lot of things in the way. If you're losing, you don't get to stand here very freely. Or if things are just neutral, you don't get to stand here very freely. So, if you're winning, it's great! If you're not winning, it's terrible. Who would have guessed, right? Startling information, right? You probably didn't know this. If you're winning, you're probably having a good time. And if you're losing, you're probably having a quite a bad time, actually. I know. Start shocking, isn't it? So because we are winning, though, we get to benefit from the geometry of the map. Now we're going to use Transcendence. It's fair enough because quite a few people are low health, and Moira's using Coalescence, but, like... It isn't the sort of ult that saves people who are seconds from death, right? Or, like, a second from death. So, it's fair enough. Um, the fear now is that Soldier will use Tac Visor before we have Transcendence back up. But at the same time, we also have D.Va on our team, so it might not matter. This is also not one of the best maps for Tac Visor, because there isn't a great position to start using it in unless you're already winning. This is, you know... Technically, you can attach the quantifier, unless you're winning, to absolutely anything, right? You know, Torbjorn is really good on attack if you're winning. Because then you get to just put the payload on the objective and just, like, push Molten Core and, oh, no, it comes in and kills everybody, if you're winning. So we hear McCree, we duck down, McCree's dead now, no more concern, jump back up, start throwing orbs at people. Hooray, it's great. Um... It doesn't, uh, it feels like one of those maps where, or one of those matches rather, where the outcome of the game is kind of preordained, honestly. Like, we, we don't need to use Transcendence right now because not very much is happening. Unless we heard soldiers start using Tac Visor, I don't think so. Uh, we kind of started using it right as he did, so I'll give the benefit of the doubt and assume we heard I've, and then we pushed the button. I'll give the benefit of the doubt. Um, probably could have held it for a little bit longer, though. Like, when we start using it, everybody is full health and, like, not looking like they're in danger of dying. Like, D.Va goes in, but, like, it's not the end of the world, probably, right? I actually didn't know he had this emote. I don't think I've ever actually seen that. Hmm. You learn something new every day. That was fun. Hmm. Stromboli! Hmm. I wonder what he does. Wow, no way. Oh, another one. Wow. Is he gonna get a third? Oh, he wanted it. He fucking wanted it didn't get it though. Stromboli, what a hero. So, the thing that stood out the most in this game is I don't feel like we got very much value out of Transcendence, honestly. Um, there was the one where he was using Attack Visor, but unfortunately we still lost because Roadhog was purple while we were using it. Uh, bah, 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 bah. But I felt like overall we didn't really get much value out of Transcendence. Other than that, I don't think there was that much to say about the match. I feel like it was one of those where the outcome was going to happen kind of regardless of our input. But, um, yeah, Transcendence. Could have gotten more value out of it, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. Uh, join our Discord. I mean, I know you have, but if you haven't, or if you haven't already, other mysterious person, if you haven't already joined our join our Discord, you can ask questions more directly and have like a conversation about things. And I hope you find the video helpful.